Good evening, everybody. I'm Pierre Aberge, The Daily Trader. It is July 24th, and we are going to look at Tesla. Is it the time to get back into Tesla? So Tesla closed at 269.06. Uh, that's up $9.04. Uh, that's 3.48%. And uh, post-market, we seem to be up by $1.25. We could be opening at around 270.30 tomorrow. So let's look at the chart to understand the pattern Tesla is currently in. After the earning call last Wednesday, we had a big drop on Thursday and Friday, and we broke an important point at 265.32, which is a number that buyers used to buy Tesla and make it move up. If you look at July 10th, as soon as we came to 265.32, we started to go back up. We have a long wick at the bottom here for that candle. And on the next day, we started going higher and higher. So 265.32 was an important support area, a milestone upon which the buyers would be starting to buy a little bit more intensely. This does not work on Thursday and Friday, and it has worked today. So we are officially outside of our downward channel. We know that the, the stock market is moving in channels. But when we have a very tight channel, we know that the channel does not last a long time. This one lasted five days and then we are outside of this channel. So uh, this channel is no longer into effect. But is it time to get back into Tesla? And the answer is yes and no. No in terms of the daily chart. In terms of the daily chart, we don't have Stochastic over 60. Very few stock market move happen when Stochastic is not over 60. We don't have over 60 yet. It's still possible that Tesla moves up a little bit and then starts to cave in again. So uh, this is what we don't know. What we know right now is that we are back into our congestion zone. This is the current congestion zone of Tesla. So it is between 265.32 and 285. This pattern is now still in play. So uh, basically, Tesla is supposed to be moving between these two lines. It does not mean that it wants to go higher. We are going to know if it wants to go higher if we break 285. This is the price at the beginning of July that uh, buyers got exhausted and did not want to buy higher. If Tesla closes above 285, this is going to be considered a buy signal on the daily chart, assuming that the stochastic gets over 60 at the same time. If we take a look at the one hour chart, then this is another story. This is a little bit of a different story. So the one hour chart is giving us many more buying opportunities. So right now, look at Stochastic right here. It's at 56. And, you know, we had a W pattern. So when the stock price goes down, goes up, goes down, and then breaks this horizontal line right here, you can consider this a buy signal. On our channel, we like to have more than that. We like to have stochastic over 60 as a confirmation. So right now, this is not what we have. If we close above 270.37 tomorrow with an hourly candle, we are going to have stochastic over 60 and this will be considered a buy on the one hour chart. So this buy on the one hour chart can give you a little bit of a swing, but this is kind of a short-term swing. This is an hourly swing. It could last for a certain amount of hours, but the stock is not ready to buy on the daily chart. Let's take a look at some Tesla news. So we have an interesting news here. So Tesla starts offering seven-year loans to lower payments on its electric cars. Tesla has started to offer 84-month loans on its electric vehicles in order to lower the monthly payment and amid high interest rates. We see that Tesla is really working at maintaining demand. They are really working at making it easy for people to purchase their cars. I think this is good for the business. So there's a way to get a brand new Tesla Model 3 for less than $14,000 in California. This is crazy. So this is the exact recipe to make this work. So uh, you need to configure a brand new Model 3 rear wheel drive that starts at $40,240. But Tesla has been offering discounts on new inventory vehicles. This is one part of it. This person found a car at 37120 On top of that, he took advantage of the $500 off through referral program. Then 
he had a 7,500 incentive from the clean vehicle rebate project, $4,000 from the Electrify Your Ride program from Central Coast Community Energy. He had 4,000 bucks from the Monterey Bay Air Resources District. So I guess you need to live in Monterey. And then there's the $7,500 from the federal tax credit. So that's $23,000 in incentives. And when combined with the Tesla discount, it brings the effective price of a Model 3 to 13620 Only a few people can qualify for this. Let's take a look at the other stocks. So VIX is up 0.31. That's 2.28%. Closed at 13.90. So VIX is going up a little bit. Stochastic is still very low and we are still below our 1485 resistance right here. So it's not too bad, but let's keep watching this. Rivian, uh, Rivian, after almost closing below 23.59 not too long ago, the buyers are keeping that price high because they are just buying and buying. We closed at 25.81, up 54 cents. Uh, that's 2.14%. We still have a good stochastic here. If we close below 23.59, that's a sell. And if we close higher than 26.91, then that's a buy. If you are not already in Rivian. Xpeng, we had the small congestion zone. The buyers did not want to buy above 15.23 since the past two weeks. But now uh, there's an impulse and they started buying above this price. So this is what we are doing on this channel. We are looking at the tug of war between the buyers and sellers. And when we see that one side is starting to win, then we join that winning side. We need to have a good stochastic over 60, which is what we got. And we also need to break a resistance. So right now we just broke that resistance that was at 15.23. A resistance just means that the buyers were hesitant to pay more than that price. And this is basically what these lines are showing us See, is the hesitancy of the buyers to go higher a certain price and the hesitancy of the sellers to sell below a certain price. Right now, this is a buy signal for XPeng. And at the same time, we are into this uh, bullish channel and we are even breaking that uh, bullish channel. But the stock is going higher and higher and higher. NEO, the same pattern with NEO, you know, it is into a bullish channel. It is going sideways also between 1021 and 1131 and this one just shot up right here and look at this perfection it extended itself right up to this diagonal resistance right here it went right up there this is confirming that our lines are in the right place when a stock goes up to those lines and then come back we now have buyer support at 1131 so uh, this is a buy also because it's farther away from the support, you know, it's possible that we come back a little bit. Just be uh, mindful of that. If it would go below 1131, I would just get out of it and then hope for a re-entry above 1131 a little bit later. And we closed at 1173, up $1.15. That's 10.87%. This is a big move. Palantir, Palantir. We tried to break a few resistance and we did not succeed and came back in. We are still above this bullish channel. So the buyers are still buying up Palantir at this level right here, which is around our close at 1632. So we close at 1632, down 11 cents for 0.67%. NVIDIA, as you know, it's supposed to be zigzagging between the support line and the resistance line. And now it's doing what it's supposed to do. We seem to be stopping at this support right here. It would be nice to have a green candle that makes a higher high than this candle that we have right here. And then we would be a little bit more sure that we are starting to make another move to the resistance, which could be at around 500 bucks. So we close at 446.12, up $3.03 for 0.68%. So if you want to uh, risk it right now, you could buy right now, hoping that the bounce is going to continue. If you want to be just a bit more safe, wait for a close higher than $451.09 to be a bit more sure that we are really bouncing on this one. 
PayPal, we are still above 7107. So that's the important thing. And we are also on this trajectory here on this bullish channel trajectory. This is quite clear. And uh, right now it is just going sideways a little bit. It's pausing after the move that we had just right here. So we closed at 78.369, up 70 cents for 0.96%. For, uh, Let's look at our indices a little bit. So uh, QQQ is just going sideways, still above 372.62. Nothing new here. Dow Jones is continuing its way up. It is still in the bullish channel. So this is going well. S&P 500, the same thing, pretty much and going higher and higher. The composite is just going sideways. It's just above 14,006. Gold is having a hard time breaking 1541, uh, but because Stochastic is still over 60, we should conclude that this little bit of a move down is just a pullback. It's just a pullback and it should be recovering at some point. Silver also pulling back. We stayed a little while above 841, but now we just cannot sustain ourselves here. The buyers are kind of exiting that one for now. Bitcoin is showing a lot of weakness. We stayed above 29.638 since June 22nd, and we have maintained this price quite well. And we saw that we were struggling right here. You can see what happened here. We had the floor at 29.838, but we see that Stochastic was weakening, weakening, weakening up until it became below 60. So when Stochastic goes below 60, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. It can still remain above support but the risk that it closes lower or higher. And look at what happened. Boom, it just fell. The buyers ceded some territory to the sellers on Bitcoin. Ripple, we could not break 85 cents and we are just caving in. I think it demotivated people a little bit. We have some buyer support at 64 cents. We have some buyer support at 66 cents also. Let's see if we can maintain these two numbers. Again, here, we just lost stochastic over 60. So the risk that we are going lower is increasing a little bit. US dollar climbing back up also a lot, but stochastic is not over 60. So uh, this move is not to be believed yet. And NEO battery material on the Canadian exchange. Uh, we don't have stochastic over 60. It's at 52, but we are having a pretty good day because we still closed at 37 cents. And we did not go as low as where we were last Friday. So maybe the buyers are starting to win a little bit. If we look at DNA, we are just outside of our bullish channel momentum. This means that we are not going as high as fast anymore. So we need to rely at our buyer support at $2.24. If we lose that, then we need to get out of that one for now. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you like what I do, you can become a YouTube member. Click on my trading view affiliate link. I'm going to wish you a great evening. We are going to talk tomorrow and I'm going to tell you à la prochaine.